Hi, and welcome to Reviewing with Mrs. Wages. Today, we're going to talk about organic molecules. Let's begin with objective number one, which asks you to identify and describe the functions of the four major macromolecules found in living organisms. Before getting to the specifics, let's first think about how many macromolecules are organized. Some of those huge molecules are made of chains of smaller molecules. These larger molecules are called polymers, and the smaller building blocks are called monomers. This picture shows several small green monomers at the top that are organized or assembled into more complex, larger polymer at the bottom. Many carbohydrates are also polymers. An example would be a polysaccharide, which is composed of monosaccharide monomers. Nucleic acids such as DNA and RNA are also polymers. Their monomers would be the nucleotides. Proteins are also polymers. Amino acids are the monomers or the building blocks of these particular macromolecules. Now let's focus on the functions of these molecules and some common examples too. Proteins are very diverse and carry out many different functions in living organisms. In class, we focus on enzymes, which are usually made of proteins. The job of enzymes is to speed up chemical reactions in our cells. But other proteins are important in the formation of muscles, cell membranes, and skin. Proteins are commonly found in foods such as meats and dairy products. Carbohydrates are also a diverse group. They're considered the main source of energy for most living organisms. Carbs are commonly found in grain-based foods such as breads and pastas, but they're also found in sweets such as cookies and candy. Nucleic acids such as DNA and RNA are heredity molecules. In other words, they store and transmit your genetic information. You look like you do because you inherited the DNA of your parents. While proteins, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids are all polymers, lipids are not. They're considered to be a macromolecule, but not built from chains of monomers. The two building blocks of many lipids are fatty acids and glycerol. Lipids have many functions, such as storing lots of energy, they help form cell membranes, and have a waterproofing quality. They're commonly found in foods such as butter, cooking oils, and fatty meat, like bacon. On to objective number two, which asks you to explain the role of enzymes in cells. So what are enzymes? Enzymes are proteins which catalyze chemical reactions within cells, which means they speed them up. Enzymes make chemical reactions that happen in our cells occur at a much faster rate because they weaken the bonds of the substrate. And remember, the substrate is the reactant of the chemical reaction that will be changed into the products after the reaction is complete. In the lab done in class, you were focusing on breaking down hydrogen peroxide. The enzyme used was catalase, which is found in liver cells. That makes hydrogen peroxide the substrate. And you saw that hydrogen peroxide was quickly broken down into oxygen gas, O2, and also water. These are the two products of the reaction. And if it wasn't for catalase, it would have taken a very long time for hydrogen peroxide to break down on its own. Enzymes can speed up reactions because they weaken the bonds of their substrates. And because those bonds are weak, the reaction can happen at lower activation energy levels as well. This means we don't need a lot of heat to get a reaction to go fast. Enzymes make them happen at normal body temperature. Remember, enzymes are kind of fussy. They're greatly influenced by their environment. They don't like it to be too hot nor too cold. They also don't like it to be too acidic or too alkaline. Thus, temperature and pH would be two environmental factors which control how enzymes do their jobs. This picture shows how the substrate and the enzyme interact together. The substrate fits almost perfectly into the active site of the enzyme. Because it's not quite a perfect fit, the bonds of the substrate become weakened, allowing the enzyme to do its job. This picture shows how enzymes and substrate look before, during, and after a chemical reaction. Take a few moments to pause the video and examine this picture. On the right of the diagram, it shows two substrates and an enzyme. This is before the reaction. 
and during the reaction in the middle, you can see how the two substrates are joining with the enzyme to form the enzyme substrate complex. And on the right, after the reaction is complete, you can see the product of the reaction releasing from the enzyme itself. And remember, this reaction could have happened on its own. The enzyme just made it happen at a much faster rate. The flashback for this unit is going to be on graphing scientific information. If you are going to display the information that you gathered from your scientific investigation, it's pretty important that the reader know what they're looking at. Be sure to include the following in your graph. Number one, the title. Number two, the name of the independent variable and also the name of the dependent variable. Both should have the units in parentheses very nearby. I would also like to see you label the x and y axis and also include the fact that the x-axis is the independent variable and the dependent variable is on the y-axis. And make sure that your intervals are evenly spaced. For example, in this graph, time is represented in every one second. So each major line represents one second of time. For the dependent variable, each major line represents 10 meters per second. That's all for now. I hope this helps. And as always, happy studying.